सो लेट सी दिस गेट टू थाउजेंड एंड फोर क्वेश्चन आई रीड आउट द क्वेश्चन फॉर यू एंस दे आर सेंग कंसिडर द फॉलोइंग प्रोग्राम सेगमेंट फॉर अ हाइपोथेटिकल सी पी यू हैविंग रजिस्टर्स आर वन आर टू एंड आर थ्री यू आर गिवन दिस कोड एंड नेक्स्ट दे आर आस्किंग कंसिडर दैट द मेमरी इज बाइट एड्रेसेबल विद साइज थर्टी टू बिट्स एंड द प्रोग्राम हैज बिन लोडेड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम मेमरी लोकेशन वन थाउजेंड इन डेसीमल इफ एन इंटरप्ट अकर्स वाइल द सी पी यू हैज बिन हार्टेड After execution of halt instruction, the return address in decimal saved in the stack will be. You are given four options, and you need to find what will be saved on the stack as the return address. So first, see first. Let's see what this program is doing. We are moving the contents of memory location five thousand to R one. Next, we are trying to access the address saved in R one. Here R1 saves something that we are using as a address to access that memory location, and we are fetching that memory location's data into R2. So these two instructions are kind of implementing indirect addressing mode or memory indirect addressing mode. Mode. What that means is this five thousand. contains some data which we are again using as address say it's containing 4000 4000 now this data we are again using as a address to fetch the actual operand or actual data so these two instructions are equivalent to using memory indirect addressing mode next whatever we have fetched in this register r2 from this location we are adding it to the contents of register r3 and then the result is saved into memory address 6000 okay you can see the interpretation of these instructions here it's given in the question and you are also given how many words each of these instruction is taking Next, there is a very interesting line in the question. It reads, "Memory is byte addressable with size thirty-two bits." So, memory is byte addressable means each and every byte in memory has a unique address with the size thirty-two bits. by writing this they probably mean the word size now in most of the questions word size and byte addressable they are linked means each word has one unique address so saying memory is byte addressable kind of means one word is equal to one byte in most of the cases but here they are explicitly telling you that word size is 32 bits which means one word is of 4 bytes so each and every byte has a address but whatever cpu fetches in one time is of 4 bytes okay let's move ahead you are given these sizes of instructions in words that means this move instruction is of 2 bytes 2 bytes sorry 2 words one word is 32 bits two words becomes 64 bits 64 bits can be written as 8 bytes so this is 8 bytes this one is 4 bytes this one is 4 bytes because one word means 32 bits 32 bits means 4 bytes this one is 8 bytes and this one is 4 bytes now you are asked the program starts from address number 1000 and what will be the return address saved if some interrupt occurs at this line
Okay, let's see. First of all, this line is saved on the address 1000. Program's execution begins from address number 1000. That means bytes numbered from 1000 to 1007 contain the first instruction because 8 bytes are 1000 to 1007 then from 1008 to byte number 1011 1011 they contain this these four bytes corresponding to the second instruction then bytes from 1012 to 1015 contain this this data these four bytes corresponding to the third instruction similarly you can see these numbers okay now if you see the last instruction is a halt instruction what is meaning of halt halt means you are telling your cpu to wait here only that means you're telling your cpu to just keep on waiting here for some interrupt or for some indication external indication to continue so cpu keeps on waiting until that indication is given how does the cpu keeps on waiting like CPU is just continuously doing fetches, decodes and executes. What happens here when you write this halt? How does that execution cycle, fetch cycle, all, all of that stops? Actually what happens is, say on address number 700, the instruction that you specified is halt. Why doesn't the program counter increments after execution executing this instruction and why doesn't the cpu fetches the next one how is all of this working so for that you need to understand that halt means a jump instruction that to unconditional jump jump 700 what that means is you are instructing your cpu to jump back to this line only that means you are not allowing, allowing allowing the cpu to move ahead you are kind of restricting so whenever you reach this line whenever the cpu reaches this line while executing the program it says jump to seven 700 that means come back and execute this line so cpu again executes it Again, it says jump to 700 that keeps on happening infinitely or until some external source gives an interrupt to CPU. Okay, so the way of resuming your execution back is interrupting the CPU or else CPU will keep on busy waiting here. The word is busy wait. Or it's spin lock. If you have studied that subject operating systems from me or from some other source, you are familiar with these words. Okay, I will not explain these here. But what it means is CPU is kind of using its full potential to just execute this line again and again repeatedly. That means electricity is being used, CPU is performing fetches, but no useful work is being done. It's just looping on this line again and again. We don't use such things in modern processors. That's a very old technology. Anyways, now they're saying at this point, some interrupt occurred. What is the return address of that interrupt? That means after returning from that address, from where should we continue? It's very logical to continue from the next instruction, no? Because if you continue from this very instruction, if you provide the return address to be 1024, then again CPU is going to halt. So the answer is going to be 
द एड्रेस ऑफ नेक्स्ट इंस्ट्रक्शन दैट मीन्स this address it's 1028 this is the answer to this question okay and in a very famous website few people were discussing that answer should be this i don't think so this must be the answer because that way you can't ever resume the execution properly to resume the execution or to end the effect of this halt instruction after some uh, interrupt occurs the best way is to return the save address as the address of next instruction okay so the next question reads as the next part of this question is if an interrupt occurs during the execution of add instruction what will be the return address pushed on to the stack so this time the interrupt occurs during the execution of add instruction first thing you need to remember that interrupt whenever it occurs it will be processed only after completion of this instruction that means if while executing or decoding or fetching this instruction say a interrupt occurred cpu will still perform this instruction only until it ends the execution of this instruction until it's complete cpu will focus here only next it will check for interrupts now we are saying that interrupt has occurred so what will be the return address obviously it's going to be the address of next instruction so the answer here is 1016 the next part it reads as let the clock cycles required for various operations be as follows register to or from memory transfer three clock cycles add re, uh, add needs one clock cycle instruction fetch and decodes two clock cycles per word and we need to calculate the total number of clock cycles required for executing this program okay let's see now first of all each and every instruction need to be fetched and decoded so how many words are they one uh, these are four six seven seven words means fourteen cycles because we are given each word takes two cycles to fetch as well as decode now register to memory transfer takes or memory to, to register transfer takes three clock cycles which means after fetching this instruction after fetching as well as decoding it we get to know that it's a memory instruction memory reference instruction so it's going to take three more clock cycles what it means is after spending two cycles on fetching and decoding this instruction you're going to spend three more clock cycles that is 14 plus 3 for this one similarly plus 3 for for this one okay add instructions take one clock cycle which you are given in the question and next is this move instruction it's again a memory reference instruction so 3 for this instruction 3 clock cycles and the total is 6 9 10 24 so your answer here is 24 clock cycles now please don't over complicate things by saying this halt will be fetched again and again and again and again or what about decoding this one if you are not given anything about decoding sorry execution of halt instruction just leave it keep things simple so answer here is 24 clock cycles and i'll see you in the next video